Well, I'm pleased to tell you that a month into this role, I don't feel I'm on my own. Indeed, one of the hallmarks of HMC is that though we are all fiercely independent, we are also, by nature and inclination, team players. A great chorus of voices, if you like. We may have one or two divas in our choir, but we do make quite a sound when we're together. Well, the theme of the conference is finding a voice, and that works on three main levels. First of all, what we're about as, uh, as leaders of our schools is helping the young people in our schools to find their voice, find out who they are, and, uh, and giving them the opportunities that come from a liberal, holistic education uh, that our schools represent so well. Secondly, finding our own voice as, as leaders of our schools at whatever stage we're at. And I hope the conference enables people to do that, gives them a rich experience uh, and a creative experience in, in, to take something back in that respect to develop themselves. And thirdly, finding our voice as an association, the HMC in the public square. If we hear echoes of voices raised here before us, they may be a male voice choir, a victorious Ryder Cup team, or some of our world leaders whose summit was the warm-up act for ours. The security may be less tight for HMC than for NATO, but we too can change the world because we're in the business of building the future. So welcome to Celtic Manor and the 2014 conference. I hope you enjoy the three days that are about to unfold. I've been uh, chairman for a month. Uh, I've got 11 months to go. And so, you know, there's an agenda to be set and developed there. Um, but in terms of the conference, itself, yes, it's the culmination of a year's work as chairman-elect, um, with great support, of course, from the, from the team at HMC. Opening the very first conference at Uppingham in 1869, our founder chairman, Edward Thring, who the previous year had been very skeptical of the value of such a meeting, said this, I've been exceedingly struck of late by the isolation of schools and the want not only of a common voice but of any pronounced opinion from the most important profession in England. It seems to me very strange that there is no professional voice raised or capable of being raised at a time when all England is full of cries and judgments and legislation about education. 145 years later, Thring's voice still resonates. I hope that none of us here feels the isolation of schools and I trust you believe, and will sense even more strongly at the end of this week, that HMC raises a strong professional voice on behalf of all of us. Because in 2014, the cacophonies of cries, judgments, and legislation about education is still grating on the ear. We remain uniquely placed to insist, sometimes in a still, small voice, sometimes fortissimo, on the vital importance of a liberal, holistic education for children in the 21st century. Our schools are rightly regarded as among the best in the world for that reason. Academic success, excellent exam results are necessary, but not sufficient. Following in the footsteps of Thring and other great Victorian educationalists, we continue to educate the whole child and prepare young people for the whole of life in our own era. And yet undoubtedly, HMC today is much changed and is now defined both by its quality and its diversity. We count among our number all sorts of schools, co-ed and single sex, boarding and day, and all stations in between. All through and standalone senior schools, highly selective and broader church, local, national, international, rural, urban, suburban. Our membership criteria guarantee quality but we are all different shapes and sizes. Contrary to lazy media stereotypes, we are not all cut from one kind of cloth. What does mark us out is that we are all genuinely independent, not funded by the state or local authority, directly accountable to parents with whom as heads we have a specific written contract. Our genuine independence allows us to be flexible, nimble, and responsive to change. Strong on the best of tradition, yes, and also innovative, unafraid to do our own thing. And as Tim Hans rightly stressed this time last year, focused on the child first, last, and always. 
The diversity within our association means that it's not always easy to speak in sound bites. The truth is usually a bit more complex than that. Yet when need be, we do and must speak truth to power. This week is our annual chance to talk together, as well as our annual opportunity to engage with guests from within and beyond the world of education. It's a chance to speak with the journalists who grace these occasions and through them to address a wider public. As we raise our voices here in these Welsh valleys, what do we want to say to the world beyond? We are a very important part of the system in, uh, in this country uh, and sometimes uh, you know, we're denigrated and I think that's, uh, that needs to stop. People need to stop scapegoating us and start celebrating the contribution we make, the contribution academically in terms of things like holding the exam system and regulator to account on behalf of all pupils in all schools, uh, things like the economic contribution we make to this country and, and things like the cultural contribution we make in, in the pupils we turn out and also in uh, the creative side of, of the cultural life of the UK, which is so important. So I think there's, there's an enormous amount to celebrate and to take forward and I just hope some of those messages get across to uh, policy makers in the future. We can't in the end solve all society's ills. Education is part of the answer, but economic, family and social policy matter hugely too. We're not a laboratory for social engineering, just as universities are not. Each place is rather, in Thomas Jefferson's words, an academical village. My own academical village is located within a small Rutland town, which for hundreds of years has hosted a market in its square every Friday. Some stallholders are established vendors who've been there every week for decades. They know everyone and each other. Others come in and try out exciting new ideas. Last week, there was a wood-fired pop-up pizza stall. The traders are in competition, of course. They all want to tempt you to spend the notes in your pocket on their cheese or fish or curry or whatever the product is. But they are also clearly friends and colleagues. When they're not serving their customers, they're chatting to each other, comparing notes. From time to time, they get together and demand better treatment from the local council. They've recently successfully organized a new layout to improve exposure for those previously hidden around the back. Theirs is a real market, of course, but it's a world away from that of the big corporate supermarkets. Our town market has room for collegiality and collaboration, as well as competition. By talking together and constantly innovating, welcoming in new ideas which are then tested in the white-hot crucible of the Uppingham Town Square, this market survives against all the odds. Edward Thring was thrilled to realize a similar thing at that very first gathering of heads. <clears throat> a healthy rivalry, he said, is good. I do not wish to destroy it. But I find a hearty desire on all sides to do our best, an earnest spirit in all the leading schools to do honest, hearty work. Let us be rivals in this. Let us indeed. The HMC is an organization of competing schools which are stronger because they talk together, because they lobby together, because they find a common purpose greater than the success of each individual school. It's a marketplace like street markets across our land. And as we stand back from our customers or consumers this week and chat together here, there'll be much on our agenda, from exams and curriculum change to the teenage brain from creativity and culture to issues of politics, privacy, and the public interest, not to mention who's in and who's out. The lecture hall, seminar rooms, and bars will be buzzing. I think there have been some really interesting sessions and quite a lot of contrasts and interesting pairings, and uh, the singing and the music, which I wanted to be a key theme here in the Welsh Valleys. Uh, I think a lot of people are enjoying that. Uh, and if they're not, then I'm sure they're enjoying the other facilities that are on offer here. And, uh, you know, we'll wait and see what the feedback is from the delegates. But uh, uh, I'm hearing that they're enjoying it, so that's great. At the end of the 1869 meeting, it was reported that the immediate gain to those who had met struck everyone strongly, and the sense of union, support, and increased working power elicited warm expressions of satisfaction. All were strengthened by what had been done. When you leave Celtic Manor, I trust that you too will have enjoyed a sense of union, support, and increased working power, that you too will have been strengthened by what has been done. I hope you will be in good voice. You've patiently listened to mine for quite long enough. Thank you. <laughs>